This video will introduce you to Padge DX Designer and provide you with tips and tricks in order for you to get up to speed as quickly as possible. DX Designer is Mentor Graphics schematic capture tool for all of their PCB design tools. On the left hand side of the screen you can see the project navigator and all of the schematic sheets within this project. If you expand a project sheet you can expand the symbols as well. If you click on one of these symbol reference designators, it will highlight within the schematic. Clicking on one will also open up the properties associated with that symbol on the right hand side of the screen. We can do the same thing with nets in each schematic sheet. If I click on a net in the navigator, it will highlight and its properties will be shown on the schematic. In order for the tool to be easy to use, extended tooltips have been added to most of the icons on the toolbars. To enable these extended tooltips, hover your mouse over one of the icons and a short video will play describing how to use this particular feature. All of the windows within DX Designer can be moved and dragged around or resized. They can also be placed on different monitors if you have multiple monitors in your workspace. They can be tabbed to certain locations as well in order to maximize your workspace within DX Designer. If you go to Setup, Settings, this opens up a very important dialog box within DX Designer. It controls many of the settings within your particular project. These include which library you're working with, which special components you're working with, as well as ability to adjust the colors and look and feel of your environment. There are a few different options within DX Designer to place components. The first is using PADS Data Book. This uses a database to search through parametric properties that allows you to make intelligent component selection. Here in the capacitor partition, I can simply drag and drop a capacitor onto the schematic. If I would like, I can actually search in some of these columns. For example, I'll search for a value of 10 microfarads. Now, Databook will only return capacitors that meet that criteria. I can use the My Parts box on the right hand side of the screen to place special components such as ground and power pins. To place these, I simply drag and drop the component onto the schematic sheet. Also within this window are a recently used section that displays all components that have been recently placed on our sheets, as well as a favorites component section where I can drag and drop components in here to save for use later. If I switch to the IC partition within Databook, you'll see that within the datasheet and photo columns there are hyperlinks to datasheets and photos of both of these. If I click on one of them within Databook, it will open a page within our browser to the datasheet. This hyperlink can also be accessed once the component has been placed onto the sheet. This can be achieved by right clicking on the component and going to open hyperlink and clicking on the hyperlink. Creating connectivity between components in DX Designer is very simple. The first way to achieve this is to just drag two components so two pins are connected and drag them apart. This automatically creates connectivity between the two. Also I can click on the net icon on the toolbar and just click and hold and drag a net around to create connectivity. To copy a component hold control and drag and drop a component elsewhere. Now that we have a copy, you can just drag this capacitor in line with the other two capacitors and it will automatically be connected. In order to ensure your components are aligned the first time you place them, enable dynamic alignment markers. This allows like components to have a dotted symbol when they are aligned with other components. Also, if they are dragged in the correct spacing, they will have arrows indicating this. These were some quick tips and tricks for DX Designer. You'll find more information in the PADS Evaluation Guide.